High school is an awkward time. We have people who are literally about to go to college in the same building as people who just came from middle school. This is a social disaster. We have seven foot 10 athletes deadlifting 800 pounds sitting next to UNICEF Timmy, both struggling to read ninth grade English. Not only is everyone physically different, everyone's at a different emotional level too. We have some people working three jobs after school and down the hallway we have people trading Pokemon cards. Similar to the medley of confusion that comes from our adolescence, the roundhouse kick also comes in many shapes and forms, and they all have their different places in the society of martial arts. Some are popular, some are losers, but they all have their place in the social class. Just like high school. Class is in session. We're about to learn. Welcome to the School of Roundhouse. The first kick up is the circular roundhouse kick, aka the Muay Thai kick, the kickboxing kick, the power kick. This is the jock of all roundhouse kicks. It's popular, it's big, makes a lot of noise, can cause damage to himself and everyone around him. This guy put all his stats into one thing, power. You will not catch this guy level grinding at 3 a.m. only to level up and put his scarce skill points into something like flexibility. Now we're gonna start off this kick by preemptively showing our intention. So step your lead foot out in an already pivoted position what this step is going to do is going to prime my hips open so that I have the most range of motion to carelessly swing my leg through the target. I myself like to do an extra pivot as I'm doing the kick. But on a more serious note, uh, let's break this down. If I pick this knee up, okay, you'll notice it's off to the side. I still have to rotate this hip to come across. This is where I like to do my second pivot. I step, I lift. I like to pivot and swing at the same time. Okay, now it can come straight across. Some people even angle it a bit down and swing it all the way through. Now doing the left leg is even more alpha than doing the right leg because for some reason we always have to do a jump switch, making more noise, stomping around before we do the actual kick. Whoosh. Shakaka. Ah. Give me your lunch, buddy. Next is the linear roundhouse kick. This is the nerd that later grows up to be your boss. This person is technical, complicated. Step number one, we're gonna pick the knee up, just like for a front kick. Next, we're gonna do our favorite drum roll, please. The pivot. So tippy toe and turn. Just to keep it simple, let's just say your knee should be pointing towards your target. If we start a little back here and go to here, not a big deal. We have our snapping motion, bam, and down. Unlike the Muay Thai kick, since we don't have a lot of residual momentum, we should be able to just drop it down in front like we're walking forward, thus making it a linear roundhouse kick. This opens up options for doing the other leg, or we can just keep going the same way, or put in some footwork instead. We can also do some flicky stuff. The point is with some practice, this kick can generate almost as much power as the Muay Thai kick, but with a whole lot more versatility. Next is the 45 degree kick. This guy's a commoner, a plebeian. This person's a C average student across the board. He's not really a loser, but there's nothing really special about him. He's just kind of there to satisfy your peripheral vision. These are the pidgeys and caterpies of roundhouse kicks. It's not much for me to really demonstrate. This is the one that everyone does kind of by default. Now this kick still has a time and place, and in a pinch it can score you some points. Maybe if someone has a wide guard, you can cut that 45 right under the elbow. Doing the 45 degree roundhouse kick is really not that hard. You just kind of have to half-heartedly do any other kind of roundhouse kick. Next is the reaching roundhouse kick or the extended roundhouse kick. This person is either short, lazy, or both. Why use footwork to get closer to my target when I can just lazily lean back and shift my hips forward instead? Now my leg is connected to my hips. If I can change the position of this base point closer to my target, mm, gotcha! Next is the short roundhouse kick. You know that guy that stands a little too creepishly close to you? I'm just saying, if I can either smell you or feel your breath, or even worse, breathe in the same air that you just breathed out, this guy does not follow the rules of social distancing. Now, just like the reaching roundhouse kick, once again, my hips are the base point of my leg. This is a little too close for me to hit. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna stick my butt out, and then it's bah. Next we have the parachagi, also known as the switch kick. This guy is clutch. 
This is the friend that's got your back even when you're wrong, especially when you're wrong. And that's because this kick is thrown in a situation where you just got kicked or you're about to get kicked. This is the trusty counterattack you want in every fight. This kick is much closer range than something like a back leg roundhouse kick. This kick we preserve our distance by doing a jump switch and staying in place. Now I mix that with the roundhouse kick from the back. I got your back broke! Next we have the fast kick, also known as skip roundhouse kick. Now I've never been a morning person, so I cannot understand where these people come from. It is 7 a.m. and I have just woken up from a dead sleep 30 minutes ago. No, I did not wash my face or brush my teeth or fix my hair. I just made sure I passed the bare minimum of being socially presentable. And now here comes this prancing social butterfly. And you keep your distance, but don't worry. Even if you're out of range, this person will come to you. We're going to drive our back leg first to create some forward momentum. From here, we're going to do our happy prance and take the target. Now, the sliding roundhouse kick, he's sneaky, he's devious. I don't trust him. This guy is thinking two steps ahead. Now in the first phase of this kick, I present the visual stimulus to my opponent. I will give him a generic chamber. A very common reaction to an attack would be for him to distance himself away. Oh my gosh, so scary. Ah, but I had a strange feeling he would do that. So this guy is thinking ahead all the time. I will use the momentum from my generic chamber and the propulsion from my base leg and I present stimulus cover distance extend and attack. Now imagine Bob is here, and when I lift my leg, he scooches back, but I follow him. I knew it! My reader! Ah, call Miss Cleo today! Psych! Next we have the front leg roundhouse kick, the pioneer of new age sparring. This guy is the minimalist. Not only is he a minimalist in appearance, but functionality as well. This guy barely breaks the sweat and barely passes his class. Just like this kick, barely produces any power. And even though this guy barely puts in any effort, he's way more successful than you are. There's not much for me to explain with this kick. Uh, more like the fighting stance or the fighting style that it's thrown from. More popularly, it's thrown from more of a defensive position because I want to use it interchangeably with cut kicks. I might jab, I might slap. Either jab, either slap. Keep him guessing. The flick. This guy is the cherry picker in every organized sport you play. He just casually waits by the goal, looking for that opportunity to score and become the MVP. But when the back's against the wall, this person knows how to shake and bake. Shake and bake? Is it down here or up there? Whoop, ow. Crisscross. Whoop, psych. Next, we have the Z kick, sometimes called the Brazilian kick. And I'm sure it has a few other names, I don't know. This is the kid that's always behind the bleachers, under the stairwell, in the parking lot, except it's Saturday. You can't really read him, but if you approach him, you might get kicked in the head. Now the Z is more of a variation than a kick. What gives this variation its trademark effect is to drop the knee low. This will give it that unexpected height if you're going for a head kick. Dropping the knee low will also give it a low visual profile. So instead of being here, I want to drop this and point it down here. Visually, this does not look like a threat. This will elicit a much less urgent response from my opponent. Body. Head. Next is a not so popular and not so well known variation. This is the petty cheapskate that has 50 home rules from Monopoly systematically made so that he can never lose. This is the guy that makes up rules while you're playing basketball. This is also the guy that jumps out of bounds to get the ball and throws that at your face so it bounces off and the ball is now his. Oh, my ball. The only thing on this guy's mind is to score that point and that means the top of his instep needs to connect with this body protector. Even if that means squeezing this chamber in really tight just so that this can... Wow. Now I've seen this scoring at locals before. Is it impressive? No. Is it cool? No. Is it good martial arts? No. But did it score? Yes. Next we have the tornado kick, or not a bomb. This is the one guy that's always extra. He's got the fresh phone, the fresh outfit, the fresh kicks. Cause this guy must, he must swag on his haters. This guy puts in all that effort for that one extra point. Just like this kick. Now for the sake of keeping this video under an hour, 
I'm gonna demonstrate a linear tornado kick. So we're gonna start by shifting our weight onto our front leg because we're going to pivot on the front leg, lifting the back leg. Ideally, I want my shoulders and hips to turn at the same time. Now, because I have to pivot, there is a slight lifting of the weight. It almost feels like a mini jump. To try and cut any residual circular momentum at this point. Now, while keeping this leg up, we're gonna jump off of this base leg and switch our legs. You turn your hips so that this does actually become a roundhouse kick. Excuses. And then there's that weirdo that's kind of an outlier. Now, if you made it through the entire video, congratulations. You're the ones that validate my efforts. Shaving down about an hour and a half of footage, it's kind of sucked. So please like and subscribe, share. And if you guys have any specific questions, please ask. That way I don't need to think of a new video. Ancient Korean secret.